Hello, my name is Mara Bernardo. I'm a nurse practitioner or advanced practice registered nurse at Nemours Children's Hospital. I specialize in neurology for the past two and a half, three and a half years, excuse me, and I'm presenting today on nutraceuticals for the treatment and prevention of migraine. So I have nothing to disclose. My objectives are to understand migraine and migraine prevention, learn more about nutraceuticals and other non-medication interventions. And as you can see, this cow is being silly. Um, it has the milkers on its head and says, hey, my migraine is gone. <laughs> so I'm going to briefly touch on what is migraine as we will be learning about this in another lecture. But um, as you can see from this diagram, migraine is complex. It comes with a large range of comorbidities, um, such as sleep disorders, psychiatric disorders, GI disorders, pulmonary disorders, cardiovascular, and of course other neurological disorders can occur with migraine. So migraine's not just a headache, it's an overreaction of the brain. This overreaction process stays the same over the lifetime, but symptoms change based on the maturation of our brains. And a migrainer is a person who has had at least five episodes of migraine without aura, or two of migraine with aura ever in their lifetime. So as you can probably assume, that's an awful lot of people. It's the number one reason to see neurology. So some quick background, migraine has a 7.7 .7 prevalence in children and adolescents. It might even be closer to 10% worldwide. As I said, most, it causes the most disability compared to all other neurological diseases in late childhood. And evidence is scarce as to preventive strategies in children. And so we use off-label use of medications. And then this study, the CHAMP study, which I recommend you looking up, um, did a lot of um, comparisons over to pyramate, amitriptyline, and placebo. And um, as you can see, they're kind of comparable in the percent that um, responded. So evaluate. You want to know the frequency of the headaches, the duration, the location, the intensity, and associated symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, photophobia, phonophobia, uh, aura, visual aura, dizziness. Um, there's many more. Based on history, review of systems, lab work, maybe an MRI of the brain um, is how you make your um, rule out things that could be contributing to the headaches. But typically, all things should be normal in a migraineur. It's a diagnosis of exclusion, so you're excluding everything else. So we do um, preventative medications, which I'm going to skip over today. But our goal is no more than two headaches a month, and each headache lasting less than one hour, actually, it's not two hours. And again, we're not going to go through the pharmaceutical medications, um, but I will go through this. So headache hygiene is the number one thing you must teach for headaches to be reduced or to, and to stay away, to manage headaches. So, that's remembering the eights. So eight or more hours of sleep at night, eight or more glasses of water a day, and then five, two, three, five, two, three, five, three, two, one, almost none is the other eight, and that's about getting fruits and vegetables, less than two hours of screen time, exercise, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's some non-pharmacological options that are not nutraceuticals. So um, we use occupational therapy sometimes, physical therapy, massage, healing touch, or Reiki, aromatherapy, relaxation techniques, acupuncture, yoga, meditation, CBT, and rarely in our practice, hypnosis. Vitamin D, so going into the nutraceuticals. We are unclear how it works, but it is a key metabolic enzyme um, widely expressed in the brain. It acts as a neurosteroid, 
And uh, vitamin D has a huge role in brain development, neurotransmission, synaptic plasticity, prevention of cell death, and amyloid clearance. And we usually recommend, it's a large range, anywhere from 400 to 5,000 international units daily. Um, and that's based on practice, in individual practices. Um, and so improvement was seen by some studies, um, but they were limited in that they were small and non-randomized. And sometimes when you do correct a low vitamin D level, as one, those are one of the labs that we sometimes check for, um, it does usually help headaches. Not all the time, though. Riboflavin is huge in um, headache treatment, uh, also known as vitamin B2. Um, riboflavin is crucial in production of ATP, and usually migraine patients have mitochondrial energy deficits. Typically, um, a child over the age of 13, um, we do 400 milligrams daily, um, and then under that, I usually recommend 200 milligrams daily. Um, and it's very, um, it's excreted through the urine, so the most common side effect is usually just bright colored urine after your first pee after taking it. Um, there has been evidence to support its use, although it's, um, not, not so much that it's proven to be effective, but that it is helpful in headaches, right? Yes. Coenzyme Q10, um, again, one of the other uh, nutraceuticals that we don't always uh, recommend, but um, it is an electron carrier in the mitochondrial electron transport chain and required for cellular energy production. It may also reduce the calcitonin gene-related peptide, which is um, CGRP is um, a pathway in migraine, and there are medications that um, target this, um, this uh, peptide. Um, evidence from studies does show some efficacy, and dosages also range largely from 30 milligrams daily to 100 milligrams three times a day. Side effects include nausea, anorexia, dyspepsia, diarrhea, and rash. Magnesium. So mag a deficiency in magnesium can usually indicate neuronal dysfunction. It shows reduction of severity via IV, but all patients had previously failed one or more IV acute headache medications at that time. So again, insufficient evidence to support its use. Um, when used preventatively, it has shown to be helpful in reducing severity and frequency of migraines, but again, evidence is lacking. Um, and the, the uh, dosages range, so the big side effect here is diarrhea. Sometimes I've heard children complain of also stomach upset, and that's usually at a higher dose. 500 milligrams is at definitely at the higher end of a daily dose of magnesium, um, and I usually also go by the rule over 13, maybe even 14, up to 400 milligrams, I don't really push it past that. Um, and then younger kids, 200 to 250, depending on their age, height, and weight. Butterbur, so we are not recommending use of this at this time because of safety concerns due to hepatotoxic effect. Um, but it's mentionable, it's mentioned because it is in su some supplements that are for migraine prevention. So um, it is, you know, a perennial shrub um, and it has anti-inflammatory and vasodilatory properties. And then polyunsaturated fatty acids. So I have anti-inflammatory properties, but no conclusions could be made. So again, this is not something we usually recommend except in diet. Um, you know, we always want our um, patients in, with migraine to have a healthy diet, and that would include, you know, adding more of these um, types of fatty acids and fats. Melatonin. So, melatonin is a neurohormone secreted by epiphysis and extrapenial structures. Um, as you can see, it normalizes circadian rhythms and usually helps sleep improvement, especially our kids that have problems with sleep initiation, which is part of headache hygiene, getting those eight hours a night. Um, it has an analgesic effect. There's evidence to support that. And receptors have been found in the trigeminal nerve. And a recommended dose, no more than 10 milligrams nightly. 
Um, rarely side effects have been reported of nightmares and typically it's supposed to be used limited, like no more than 30 days at a time, I've been told. Um, because you're, the point of it is to get back into a normal circadian rhythm. It's not supposed to be used nightly for years, but some people do like it and um, just prefer to do that. And here's a diagram of the pineal gland. So basically, quality of evidence continues to be low unless there have been new studies since I've done this presentation. Um, limitations in the studies, issues with design, power, and methodology. There's no definitive evidence to support most of these vitamins uses. Um, and then CBD oil I just mentioned here because a lot of parents ask us about that as um, a preventative strategy instead of using pharmaceutical medication. And you know, the evidence again doesn't really support it and um, uh, we really typically don't recommend it. Here are my references, and I hope you enjoyed the lecture.